is Thursday, July 6th. I traveled uh, overnight. If you've never traveled in a Tesla, it's a little bit of a long one, but I will tell you, um, it was like pandemic traveling. July 4th, Brandon was 100% right. July 4th, uh, I saw fireworks. I have some of the front uh, dash cam video of the fireworks going off as I'm driving uh, straight into thing. I posted some pictures of the dogs. If you want to watch them, join the private Facebook group. Um, but it's all up there. Uh, but Tesla, <laughs> if if I, I just read a Polestar uh, review, and they said it, it, it that from Vegas to L.A., and back, uh, they had an average, they only have to stop once. The average wait was three and a half hours um, for the Electrify America for the CCS charging. The Tesla charging is not even close to three and a half hour wait. Um, so the charging network is why you buy a Tesla. So uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, let's see, June ADP payrolls. Up 497,000. Uh, it was expected to be 220,000. Um, essentially, that puts the rate hike for July probably back in focus. The market futures took a dive down. Um, all this is is a pullback. You're seeing on your screen right now, I've got SPY. This is the four-hour algorithm. You still have confirmation up over the nine-day. Don't think that we've pulled back. But as far as the um, the RSI is at 68, you're at 70. It's an overbought market. The MACD still hasn't crossed down necessarily. If we take a look at the weekly on SPY, you still got that green candle. Uh, it's a shortened week. Volume will probably be down. You still have this ascending wedge. Um, you're not even close to the 200-day. The 50-day just turned positive. You're not up to your all-time highs. I think we do get up to those all-time highs at some point in time this this year. Uh, I just think July is starting off kind of like June started off. You just kind of take a breather. May was a good month. June took a breather in the first couple of weeks as, as well. You can see. Um, let's go back to the first week in June. Uh, it was up slightly. You only had a 1% uh, period. You started out at 422. You closed at 427. Um, you know, the, the, the first week in, in July uh, so far, we, we opened at 442. You closed at 443. So we're only at 443 right now. In pre-market, you're at um, uh, 439. So you're below where we started. It's just, it's coming back. I mean, you know, again... Long term, don't worry about it. Short term, if you're playing some some options, uh, what is what is ever. Uh, bond rent rates went up. Uh, the two ten inversion is wider than ever. Uh, remember the bond inversion two to ten. It it means that the two year rate is higher than the ten year rate, and it's 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 a significant amount. I think it's the two years closer to five percent. The the ten years closer to just under four percent. So it's a big enough inversion. Uh, this has been signaling since last March. It signals that a recession is likely. Um, doesn't signal how bad the recession will be, how long the recession will be, whatever. Um, there was a discussion on CNBC this morning that was pretty interesting about uh, is this job market strong, um, meaning that we have uh, more jobs available than actual workers, in that maybe the jobs that are posted aren't necessarily going to be filled. They're just, we're being more um, uh, more productive. So uh, it is what it is. Now, Thread, they don't, I can't show it to you. Uh, it is the new social media network uh, Twitter clone that Meta launched. Uh, and Meta stock, it had a cross-up. I mean, it's a secondary cross-up. This has been signaling by... Uh, all the way from $240 back here in April um, when it crossed these. I mean, it, and it got you out with a 14% gain. It, it missed that gap. If you just stayed in this one, um, when we hit January in the lows around 118 I mean, you've doubled your money. You've almost tripled your money at 118 You will probably triple your money. Uh, let's take a look at a, a long term, uh, this weekly one. Um, this weekly, you still have somewhere near, uh, you know, this is going to be a $400 stock. So at 294 do I think you buy it? It's at 298 in the pre-market. 
I think if you get this under 300, you're doing yourself a favor. They're going to print money. If you haven't been on thread, essentially it is 100% a Twitter clone. Uh, it is, I, I likened it to, I went to a Chinese post office in 1993 when I was in Beijing one time. There were absolutely no lines. There was pretty much just, if you can make your way to the counter uh, through the crowd, that's how you got helped. That's what Threads is like right now. It's 100% just a total S-I-H-I-T show. I mean, it really is. Um, it's a mess just because, you know, yeah, you get all of your Instagram followers, but what do you follow your Instagram followers for? Photos. Not necessarily their thoughts on the, uh, the, the universe or, you know, what, uh, what their horoscope says. So it's a bit of a probably going to be a nuance, uh, but there hasn't been another social network that was created that within the first two days had close to 50 million uh, downloads. So I, I think they, that as of last night, they were close to 20 million. So I'm assuming in the, the next day or so, you're probably going to get another 20 million. Um, remember, they have close to a billion people on, on Instagram. So uh, I, I think it's bullish for the stock. Uh, they don't have ads. Um, I'm still finding myself going on Twitter just to kind of go there. But I think it's a $400 stock. So if you want to buy this one, I, I think you're fine doing it. Even if you miss this run, you still have confirmation. Now, as far as the 65-minute algo, let's check. I wouldn't suggest you trade meta in the 65. It's part of my grade eight. Um, but this one has you in at 296. So, uh, you know, you're, you're seeing a bit of a, a flop over there. But, I, I, again, I think, it's a two, I, I think it's a $400 stock. At some point in time, it, get back, it gets back to close to 400 um, let me talk about Trendspider a little. What you're seeing right here is Trendspider, and they had their 50% off sale uh, this weekend for July 4th. Uh, I think it started on Thursday or so. Um, there was an overwhelming response. A and first off, I'd like to thank everybody that signed up, uh, not only through me, but everybody else who signed up for Trendspider. If you, you know, got a referral from me to Trendspider, I think you're going to enjoy it. What I want to do since there were so many welcome letters sent out from me, is if you have questions on Transpider, just post them. I'd like your feedback on the onboarding experience, how it was. Um, you can message me. You can write it on in the private Facebook group. You can uh, to hit me up on threads with your, uh, your, your thoughts on it. Remember, uh, threads doesn't have DM, so I'm not getting crypto invites either. Uh, that aren't like, you know, specific, that are specific to me. The crypto invites are still there, but, uh, but I'd like to do a zoom or a, a live Facebook for those of you, um, that, that, or even a FaceTime probably where we can all interact. Um, part of the hope is that when more of you get it, um, that we start sharing strategies and I call them algos. But up here in the upper right, you'll see strategy tester. That's where you back test your stuff. Like for instance, here, Apple in the four hour, um, you know, over two years, you, uh, it, it gets you 24 positions, one a month, one per month, one position per month. And it's not exactly one per month, but with the algorithm, you make 45%. Um, with just buying and holding Apple stock over the past two years, you've made 32%. So uh, Trendspider, I, I think it helps people. Um, I actually will have some more specials coming up. Um, right now, the, the link down below saves you 25%. Again, you save 50% this past weekend. 25% is still a great sale. Um, but, you know, again, for those of you that used it, I hope your onboarding experience is uh, good. Just imagine the onboarding experience if I didn't give you the algorithm, if I didn't give you the watch list, if I didn't give you the scanners. Um, you'd have to build it out by yourself. So I think it's definitely worth it to sign up through me. Uh, hopefully you guys experience the same thing. I know some people have been emailing me. Oh my God, I'm addicted to this thing, looking at it, blah, blah, blah. So, I, but I did want to say thank you. Uh, let's talk about Bank of America. They upped their dividend by 9%. It was one of the only banks that didn't up their dividend, but they decided to. It's down below 29 again. Uh, it closed yesterday at twenty nine oh nine. I think it's a thirty dollar stock. Um, you know, at least 
So you've got a couple of dollars in here. I continue to just buy sparingly in this one. I'm not including it in my savvy trader portfolio as trades because it's not really a trade. Um, if you want to follow me on Savvy Traders, you can follow this portfolio. Uh, I've got AMD, I've got PayPal, I've got Ulta, I've got Sedge, and I've got Palantir. Um, so uh, I'm up 1% in a couple of weeks or so. N nothing huge, but I'm trading, you know, major market cap. Follow me on there. Uh, it's free. Just sign up for Savvy Trader. I actually like it because you can post your portfolio uh, and you can track your portfolio. It, it's a good a good service that I actually found that I, I think, and it emails you guys out when I make moves. Um, I follow, by the way, on Savvy Traders, I follow um, uh, Bradley Freeman right here. I like his uh, his stock portfolio, his philosophy. He trades Amazon a heavy amount. I think he's got like 20% in Amazon. Amazon is under 130. Uh, I think this is a great stock to buy under 130. You can see the algorithm got you in at 106. Still has confirmation. Might button hook a little. Maybe you get a little bit of a pullback. Um, I, I, you know, it's building its volume shelf up there. I mean, you can see when we pull this, let's pull this up back to where you got in at 106. And let's say you were just buying at 106. Well, your shelf right here is at 127. So it's building its volume shelf up there for you. So it's providing some support. I think it's good. I posted in the private Facebook group two charts, Sedge and PayPal. I posted both the 65-minute and the four-hour uh, as, as far as last night. Uh, what got me to do that was Sedge has kind of button-hooked on the four-hour. Right now in pre-market, it's down 1%. It's at 260. I got in at about 255. I might get out of this one, take some profits, wait for it to come down. It's starting to lose its confirmation. You can see it's below the nine day here. I'll wait for this candle. If this candle doesn't get up to 264 during the day, it's at 257 right now. Uh, I will get out with a slight gain. I do think, I don't think I'm in danger of losing my profits because at some point this gets back to 300 in my mind. What really got me was when I ran Sedge on the 65 minute. And you can see yesterday, uh, July 5th, 1030, I was driving. Got me out with a 1% gain. So that's where I said, okay, maybe I should be looking, getting out. That's how you can use the four hour and the 65 minute together on some trades in order to determine that. You can see that button hook starting on this four hour um, right up here around 270. And it, it never got its confirmation after this can morning candle on uh, July 3rd. Um, July 5th, July 3rd in the afternoon, it had some light aftermarket trading, and that's kind of where that one was. Then yesterday, it opened up down, and so it created that button hook. PayPal, on the other hand, is another story. PayPal had never uh, got you out on the 65 minute. You're still in it. Uh, it's down 1.9% to 67. Uh, and PayPal got an upgrade. Let me see if it's on FinViz. Sometimes it's not on FinViz. Um, it didn't get on FinViz, but it got an upgrade with a, uh, a, I think a $70 price target. Somewhere in that neighborhood, the average price target is now a, uh, 91. Your boy's not wearing his glasses, so I got to squint on this laptop a little bit. But average price target is 91. And that's all from this year. So everybody thinks that this one's coming back. I don't think you missed out on it. If you want to get in at 67, I think my average versus price is around 64 or so, but I do hold some at a significantly higher value in a Roth IRA. So perfectly clear and honest. Tesla, uh, I posted, TrendSpider posted a chart and I, I'll put this in the newsletter. I put it in the private Facebook group. I think Tesla comes back to $300 levels. Um, like I said, I drove my Tesla from Atlanta to New Jersey. Um, on July 4th, I left at 4 p.m. Uh, I arrived at 7 a.m. to up here in New Jersey. Uh, you do have about three hours of charging time, maybe two and a half, somewhere in that neighborhood. The chargers were fairly empty, um, but I did read a Polestar review, uh, and it goes for Polestar, it goes for Rivian, it goes for anybody, any other car other than Tesla because they use the CCS right now. Starting next year, uh, they will start using the Tesla. Uh, it's called NCAS, North America, NACS, North America Charging Standard. 
and it's only here in the US. Uh, Europe uses CCS even on Tesla and it's against Elon's wishes. But Tesla is down 1% at, at 278, 279. It's still got confirmation. There's some gaps below it. But I do think you see $300. And uh, TrendSpider posted a chart. If sellers are going to try and step in front of this train, the $300 area looks like the spot to do it. All-time high trend line, 61.8% Fibonacci retracement, and they post all this, and August 2022 highs. So if we just go back, let's look at a weekly on uh, on Tesla. If we go back to August 2022, that is, let's see, right back here. Uh, you can see your high was 314. 314. And so you've got 300 in the bag on this one. Again, a good company with good products, with good management, uh, will return to its highs. So 314, I, I, I think it's 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 in the cards. So look out on the newsletter for that one. Uh, one that I've talked about before and Zip Trader has been covering for a while. And I will post his chart. He, Charlie did a, a great analysis of Mara, Riot, and Hut, H-U-T. Uh, all three of those. Um, are, are crypto miners. And I think he did a really good job of identifying why he thinks Mara is going to be the winner. Mara is up slightly at 1557. There are a couple of things that you need to know about Mara. Um, the first one and, and the big one is uh, if the SEC approves Bitcoin spot ETF, all miners will go up. That includes Riot, Hut, and Mara. All of three of these will soar. The price of Bitcoin will soar. So understand that if those spot uh, ETFs are approved and BlackRock is, Larry Fink from BlackRock is, is quoted as saying that one of them will get approved. The other thing that you have to know about Mara, and I would suggest not being in the stock, take your profits. July 27th, they are voting to dilute themselves. There's a shareholder vote to move them from 200 million to 500 million shares. That is a dilution. It won't be, hey, we're going to uh, issue the shares um, you know, and, and keep you whole as a shareholder. It is basically issuing more stock and taking more money from the market. It's not like they're going to reduce the price. Do not hold July 27th. You want to be out of this name. Even if it's in the middle of a game, Say you bought down here at $9 and July 27th, it's at $18 or I'm sorry, July 25th, it's at $18. So you have a hundred percent gain. Take out 50%. The reason is that covers you and you're not playing with the bank's money anymore, meaning your money. You've basically taken out your initial investment. So everything you're playing with is profits. I don't like to hold through possible dilutions. That's the key. But I'll put that chart that Charlie did. I think Mara, you're still in it. I mean, if you even go to the 65 minute algorithm on this one, it's just been a monster and you haven't lost confirmation on this. You can see it's still above that nine day. Even the current candle, um, which is red now, uh, it opened up at 1579. It's trading at 1550. If you do lose confirmation on this one, you'll probably get down here to about 13, I would say. Um, buy it again when it gains confirmation. This one has just been a runner. On this 65-minute algorithm, let me give you an idea of how good this 65-minute algorithm is. On a stock like this, eight months, if you traded Mara, you would have 91 positions. Okay, Eight months, 91 positions. It's not unheard of. Put in an alert every time it crosses the eight-day EMA. Put in an alert for every time it crosses down on the eight-day EMA. That's all the 65-minute algorithm does. Now, mind you, eight months, 152% gain on 91 positions. You win, uh, let's see, 41% of the time. So you're not even winning over 50%. You're only winning 41 But. Your average win is 7.93%. And again, this is an eight-day EMA, the 65-minute algorithm. Uh, if you have TrendSpider, I know you, you've messaged me. You can import this one. It is a phenomenal 
uh, algorithm on this. Now, the MACD is high. The RSI is high. I don't know that I'd necessarily get in here at 15. I would probably wait for a couple of candles to make sure that this button hook doesn't happen and it doesn't come down. Uh, I do think that we see 13, uh, 13 handle at some point in time on this one. Wow, the market's really down. I'm seeing a lot of red. Um, so uh, there's that one. Now, Mullen has been going nuts. Uh, Mullen announced a $25 million, or I'm sorry, $25 million buyback. Um, they believe that, that with $235 million of cash, uh, that the the stock is undervalued. Uh, we started looking at this. It was trading at, 30, at 28. I said it's going to go to 31. Boom, there's your 10%. So if you guys are in this one, uh, I think it goes to probably 50 cents at some point in time. Um, but I will tell you this. I went to Bard and I said, okay, Bard, if a company, we went to oh, first over to Finviz. And I typed in Mullen. This is part of how being a good investor works. I always tell you guys what your grandmother is serving for Christmas or whether she's serving meatloaf, it's priced into the market. So people have already done this research. But Mullen has 643 million shares outstanding. So I said to, I mistyped it. I said to Bard, if a company has 648 million shares and a cash position, which Mullen says they do, of $235 million, what should the share price be? Well, Bard gave me a bunch of answers, but essentially it's a $0.36 cent per share. Now, go back to, uh, back to Finviz and see. Mullen is losing $1.1 billion. So what do they do? They hire a lawyer to attack short sellers because it is a short, uh, short interest is at 24, 27 million shares. So they, they have a heavy short interest in this one. And that's, they think that's why the stock price is bringing down. No, it's because they are losing $1.1 billion. And there's a chance this company goes bankrupt. If you are in this one, Use the 65-minute algorithm. Joe on YouTube just told me. He's using the 60, this between this and Mara, uh, he's paying for his kid's college. Uh, <laughs> using the 65-minute algo. I made the last part up, just so you know, Joe. Well, Joe knows that. The rest of the people don't. But yeah, um, I, I mean, the guy's buying a Bentley at this point, using the 65-minute algorithm. Um, he's in at 11. Don't be greedy. Don't wait for 36 cents. You know why? Because, yeah, it might go to 50, but they may announce tomorrow, you know what? We're going to, we, we think we're going to issue more stock. We're going to dilute you because the, sh the share price came up and we need some cash. Yeah, we're buying back $25 million or $250 million worth of ca uh, stock. Eh, I, I think they're playing some games. Uh, that's my take on it. Uh, David Yoakum from Twitter, if you're not following him, he is the one that came up with the 65-minute algorithm on uh, my YouTube channel. And if you go to YouTube, well, uh, the link is up there. But the YouTube channel, um, it shows you, uh, I, I do an hour-long presentation with David on how to set up your trend spider. Uh, it is twitter.com slash Yoakum's charting. Yoakum's charting, Y-O-C-U-M. Uh, and he posted yesterday about JetBlue, and uh, he posted the chart. It, it's been a monster comeback. Ooh, what was that? Uh, let's look up JetBlue. Uh, JetBlue. Do, 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 do Jets? No. JetBlue. JBLU. Um, look at that chart. That's the 65-minute algorithm. Again, 65-minute <laughs> algorithm. Um, JetBlue, let's run it on the four-hour. June 2nd, uh, $7.22. Today it's $9.02, and it's got confirmation. They announced that they're breaking their deal with American Airlines, their partnership. Jets continues to be a huge runner. I will post this chart in the newsletter. David posts some great charting ideas. So if you want to get into that one, he does do a very good job on that. Um, let me look at my notes again. Highway asked about Rivian. Good company. Uh, R I V N. Uh, Rivian's a good stock to play on the four hour algorithm. Uh, it protects you from losing. 
Uh, this one was a $15 stock. They announced that they are uh, partnering with Tesla. All of a sudden, you're at 20 Does it mean it's a great buy here at 20 Here's the problem, and it's similar to Mullen, is Rivian, while all of it is hype, they are uh, losing $6.5 billion per year. So they're not making money. Um, their, their average target price is 22. Uh, while they were trading up here at 40, their average price target was around 40. And people started saying, then their, their market cap of $17 billion came about. And, and everybody's like, well, they're not making a dime. They're going to lose money for the foreseeable future. How in the world are these guys actually staying uh, afloat here? So it's a little bit of a question. Do you believe the um, the valuation on this one? Uh, but twenty two dollars, I wouldn't get into this one. I'd probably stay out of it at twenty. I would wait for like an eighteen or a nineteen handle and wait for it to jump again. There's a gap here between sixteen and seventeen. The RSI is up at eighty five. I mean, oversold is seventy. You're at eighty five. The MACD is so far up. It's almost at 1.3 um, uh, on the MACD oscillator. And, and you've just got too many buyers. That's got to come down. It's got a button hook. And I think it's going to come down here between $16 and $17. So, um, sorry about that. I had to stop because I was hearing some funky things in the microphone. So, But everybody on YouTube says it's fine. So, I'm not going to go back and look at it. Uh, Highway Rivian is great. Um, <clears throat> Brandon emailed me and said, what are your thoughts on RE? I think this is a REIT. Uh, Everest Regroup, uh, RE. Let me see. Um, the algorithm, the four-hour algorithm, it just got you in at 340. Looks like it's playing this 200-day where it might rebound. It looks like it was hyped up. Uh, I don't know what this company does. The RSI at 339. I mean, it definitely looks, this came from 385, what, two months ago. Um, let's look at what happened to this one. RE Everest regroup. Uh, it's financial insurance, reinsurance from Bermuda. Um, it's average target price is 432. Uh, it looks like in June initiated with a 406 price target. Um, from Citigroup, June, Morgan Stanley initiated with a 429. Um, again, that 432 looks like it's fairly recent. So um, there were one, two, three, four, four, uh, four coverages, all, all initiated. Um, insider trading looks like in December, everybody was tra uh, selling at 330 bucks. Um, and that's right where you're trading. I don't know why we would think that it would be higher. Uh, if insiders are trading a good amount of this, and they are trading a good amount, I mean, it's 760000 from this director. I mean, this guy sold probably at least four or five million bucks, John Weber, um, over the period of between uh, fourth quarter of last year. Uh, he's the only insider to actually sell. Um, they sell reinsurance products. So it's an insurance company, essentially. Um, Twenty. Uh, healthy insurance companies in the U.S. You can look at that. I mean, it's a $14 billion. It's part of the S&P 500. Um, it's up 2% year-to-date performance over one year. This time last year, it was 22% up. Your 52-week range is between 244 and 394. So uh, you're 14% below your 52-week high, which is 394. So it's a $400 stock. You've had a double top here at about 390. Um, that looks to be significant resistance level. You're coming here on the daily. You're playing around the 200 day. Now, the last time it was uh, on a long term, let's take a look at the long term because I don't think that a reinsurance play would be a short term. But what do I think about long term? You haven't even come down to the 50 day. So, you know, pre pandemic, this was a $262 stock. Uh, if we look at this one from the recent lows, which was October uh, 2022, that was the lows. You've kind of put in a, a pretty good volume shelf here at 339. So I, I don't think it's a horrible buy. I'd probably wait to get a better entry point. Insurance doesn't excite me. 
I mean, Brandon, just insurance doesn't excite me. It's got a 1.94% dividend. I mean, when the AI train is rolling, this might make a good diversification, but I don't know enough about real estate to, or I'm sorry, insurance to, to say that it's a good one. It's, it's in the S and P 500. So in my mind, if you want to make a play on this one, I'd probably just buy the, the S and P 500. I mean, buy spy buy VOO. Uh, again, insurance doesn't necessarily excite me. Do I think you're going to 400? I think with the average target price at 432, I think you get there at some point. Is it next year? You know, maybe we have a, uh, a, a another huge disaster. Um, you know, who knows? But insurance is just one of those things that Warren Buffett's big on insurance. If you want to know insurance providers and, and play insurance providers, buy Berkshire, um, buy the S&P 500. I, I just, it never excited me. So I, I, I'm sorry to say it, but eh, it's okay. I, I don't think you're going to go back to 200. I mean, again, I don't know their management. I don't know their product group. I don't know enough about that stuff to say it's a great stock. But, you know, their, their, their PE is not horrible. I mean, it's a 20 PE. It's a little bit high, but the forward PE is only five. Um, they make 651 million bucks. Uh, that they're making money. So it's probably not a horrible one. It's just nothing exciting. I mean, when have you gotten excited over insurance? Not me. Uh, Fatima on Spotify asked me to go over China stocks. Uh, I don't know what China stocks means, but I do know that there there were a couple of cross-ups and I'll go over the couple of cross-ups today. The, the main China ETF is KWeb. Um, I just don't think that China is worth pouring a ton of money into, but KWeb has a cross up here at 2736. So if you want to invest in the KWeb, 2736. I mean, that covers all your China stocks. Now, over a weekly, I mean, this is in a descending wedge pattern. Uh, you can see you're playing around that 50 day, the 200 day is negative, the nine day and the 21 day are negative. There's nothing positive going on in the KWeb. But on a four hour, it did have a cross up. Uh, PDD is another one. Pinduo Duo. Uh, we had a cross up on this one at 7182, China stock. Uh, you know, the RSI is beaten down. If we go to a weekly on this one, it, it's just, it's a falling knife. Um, it's kind of playing around that 200 day, um, you know, as far as support. But ever since 2021, I mean, this has just been a dying stock. So uh, another one that I got that got across up today is JD JD.com. Um, you know, it's it's a falling knife, but it got a cross up here at thirty five twenty one. Um, you know, if we go to a weekly on this one, you can see it's just a falling knife. So you can put some money into these. Baba, I think Baba. I said Baba under ninety. Uh, I think you can actually buy. So that when it goes over a hundred, you'll be okay. The sixty-five, uh, sorry, the four-hour algorithm has you out. So it doesn't look like a good buy to me from a standpoint of right now. But you can put your money into it, maybe play some. But look, I mean, it's just been a dying sword that you've fallen onto. And every now and then, when you get these these uh, run-ups, you can play it down here. I listen uh, at eighty-three. This is a weekly. Uh, this is where it was trading way back in 2018. I think it's a much better company than 2018. If and financial comes out, uh, you've got a huge run up in Baba. So, uh, I, I think it's an opportunity, but Fatima, when you say China stocks, I wouldn't throw your money at China. They're, they're slowing down. They're printing more money. They're devaluing their currency. Uh, they have a declining population. Um, their, their middle class is growing, but not as fast. Their economy is not rebounding as fast as the American economy. So you've got some inherent problems, uh, within China. Uh, Douglas on Spotify wanted me to go over dollar general and I'm hearing an echo again. I'm going to take these off a little bit, but uh, dollar general, this is one that has been beaten down Four hour algorithm. Uh, it makes you 4%. Over two years, 24 months, uh, versus if you bought Dollar General two years ago, you'd lose 24%. So the algorithm outperforms. It has you in at 152. You're at 169 right now. 
at some point, I think you cover this gap. Again, this is a good company. It's not a bad company. The gap goes up to 190. So it's a, it's a good 10%. But I don't know that I'd necessarily get in now. You're kind of putting in this floor right here um, at, at about the 170 mark. Um, you don't really have a super ton of confirmation. And your RSI is at, uh, looks like 54 in no man's land. Your, your MACD just came up to the oscillator. I think your your uh, ex dividend date is July seventh, so you have to buy it today to get the dividend. Um, it's just exp. I mean, here we'll go to a weekly. Uh, it just got it ran up too far too fast. Uh, that's essentially what happened. Uh, look at this. You know, ever since the the May twenty twenty two, where you had this one kind of go down, and then you just ran up. Now it's at one sixty nine. You're below that two hundred day. Uh, I think it's a decent one. I, their their expansion costs them a lot, and that's essentially what it is. Their PE is sixteen. Uh, they have a thirty seven billion dollar market cap. They're making two billion dollars, so they're not losing money. But year to date, you're down thirty one percent. Over one year, you're down thirty two percent. Nobody has this on an upgrade list. Your average price target is one eighty eight. And you're trading at 169. Do you want to put your money in thinking that you're going to get that gap fill? I think there's better places to put your money in the market. That's just my take on it. But I, I don't get excited over this one. Um, TrendSpider posted a, this was, I think, uh, earlier. Uh, maybe it was before I left on uh, uh, yesterday. But uh, TrendSpider, this is the TW pivot. And essentially, December 2019, it went down. But look at the run-up that you had on that one where it, where it kind of peaked out. So the, the question is, Tito alerted a TW pivot buy signal at the end of last week. Um, do you see another bounce? I mean, that's December 2019. Uh, this was COVID. So... Do we see a bounce here? You're trading at Target. You're trading where you were pre-COVID, where it's a better company than it was COVID. Sure, you're wrapped up in in kind of the um, uh, the uh, all of the the social scandals, but I just like Target. Um, I'm gonna go and show you. The, I'm gonna put these in the uh, in the uh, the newsletter. But this one, it's about Melly. I kind of agree. Melly stock is one. The, if you don't know Melly, M-E-L-I, it's basically the Amazon of Latin America. And a couple of times I've had people in Brazil and Mexico, I believe, listeners, email me and say, hey, go over Melly for me. Well, Melly just had a buy in the algorithm at, do, 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 uh, looks like 12, 1200. It's trading at 11, just around 1200. The 200 day is kind of swinging a little bit. You had this death cross here on June 26th of the 50 day which is negative. The nine is kind of turning negative. The problem with Melly is it, it's very expensive. And so they have to continue to grow. Um, the PE is 100. The forward PE is 50. Um, they do make money. They're up 42% year to date. They're up 69% um, uh, for one year. Uh, the average price target is 1529. Now, April, there was a downgrade in New Street. They said buy to neutral. But their price target is thirteen fifty. Again, you're trading at eleven ninety. If we show the weekly on this one, you can see it's just kind of hanging around on the, that two hundred day. Your fifty day has moved negative on the the weekly. It's still going positive. You might even have a golden cross here. You had this death cross happen. You came down a little bit, but then you shot up. So I, I don't think Melly's a bad pl uh, play. I'll put that um, that video in the newsletter. The other one that I wanted to show you was um, this. It's a Business Insider, and yeah, I've got a I've, I've got a freaking um, ad blocker on my my thing, so you can't read it. But I'll put it in there. You can turn your ad blocker off. You can read this on your phones. It's a very good article on print how the Fed is printing money, but how that will help the stock market. So don't worry about them printing money. Uh, I will also put in the newsletter, there was a really good Benzinga article on uh, the rule of 10 and the S&P's top performers and, and some of the stocks that they have listed there. I'll put that in the article as well. Now, I wanted to talk about your boys, uh, Apple. So I went into Bard and I said to Bard, 
uh, what's today's Apple price? And they said 192.46 as of the thing. So this is how you can use uh, AI to try and find some trading opportunities and what a stock should trade for and stuff like that. Remember, I, I've got like 40% of my portfolio in Apple, so it's super important to me. So I want to keep up to date on it. So I asked uh, Bard, I said, what is the yearly percentage gain of Apple stock each year since its IPO? And it gave it to me. I don't know if these are actually correct. Um, that 15% in 2022, I haven't back tested it, but I tend to think that's a little bit crazy. 39% um, year to date, probably true. Um, so then I asked it, what is the yearly percentage gain of st Apple stock since its IPO? It gave me these three numbers, 1980 to 2023, you're at 18%. 1980 to 2000, you're at 32%. 2000 to 2023, which is very relevant, you're at 13%. Well, if today's number of 39% gain and last year at 15%, if those two are correct, um, we may be in for a very flat to bad second half for Apple. That's what I wanted to look at. Um, the average yearly percentage gain of Apple since its IPO is 18.8%, which is true. Um, this means that if you had invested $100 in Apple in 1980, it would be worth over $18,000 today. Uh, performance is not guaranteed. The stock market is volatile, blah, blah, blah. Um, I, I'll put all of this into the, uh, into the, the newsletter so you can read it. Let's go to some scans. Uh, first one. In, in some of the core portfolio, Pepsi. Pepsi is one that I said, if you can get it under 180, I think you should get it under 180. It triggered a buy here at 186. It's kind of hanging out just around the 200 day. The 50 day is kind of bouncing off there. If you want to add a position in this one, I don't think it's a bad place. Uh, your RSI is in no man's land. Your MACD is right on the oscillator. It's a good stock. Your boy loves Pepsi. I drink a ton of it, so I do own this stock. Uh, next one is one that I'm currently in a trade on. It's PayPal. Uh, and, and this one had a cross up here. It's a secondary cross up here at 60, looks probably around 67, 68. Uh, your initial buy here was 60. I do think that you come back up here and you cover this gap. I think today it's down like 3%. Um, it, it's, it's an opportunity to buy a little bit more. The RSI is just pulling back at 47 if you go over here to Finviz and we type in PayPal, uh, you will see the average price target is 91 on this. Uh, June 14th initiated uh, BT BTIG research with a buy at 85. So I, I think this one looks to be like it's probably going to go up. I think I said 80 by the end of the year uh, at some point. So I may add to it. Meta, they launched. I mean, this is a secondary cross up. This is a four hundred dollar stock. Uh, it's up slightly today at two ninety four. I think you grab it uh, before it gets to three hundred. Uh, Albemarle. This is a lithium play, ALB, part of our energy space that I kind of uh, put a watch list together. Two twenty nine ninety three. That's the buy. You're at two twenty six eleven right now. I don't know that I'd necessarily get into lithium or anything right now. Energy. Uh, this one for the weekly, it's well above its 200-day. It's kind of using that 50-day to trade around. Um, the 9-day and the 21 are just starting to turn positive. I'd probably stay away from this one. Another energy name that I would not get into, but I'm bringing up because it did get a cross up here at 114, is Arch. This is coal. And if you think coal is going to grow, you're out of your freaking mind. Um, this one had a great pandemic. Look at that. Since the pandemic and it was trading at 30, you're at 111. This one went all the way up to almost one, looks like almost 180 or so. I just don't think I'd get into it. Lemonade, which is the AI uh, insurance company. This one cross up here at 1737. I don't think it's a bad play. Um, I, I think the RSI is low enough. I think if you are into this one, just understand it's not making money. This one is one that is a little bit risky. Rocket Mortgage. Is another one. I think these guys are actually doing well. The dangerous part of this one is they're loaning out money at, uh, I think it's like $1,000 down and you can get a house now if you qualify. There's a lot of qualifications in that, uh, but I would be a little bit worried. KWeb, PDD, JD, we went over. 
uh, Amgen, which is one of the Dow 30. This one had a cross up here at 225. I don't know that I'd necessarily get into this one, but it has been beaten down that it's under the 200 day. The last time you were under the 200 day was the October lows. This is a healthcare stock. Do your research on that one. Understand it. Um, Zscaler, which is a, a cybersecurity company. I own Palo Alto and I own CrowdStrike. I do not own Zscaler. Cross up here at 145. If we look at a long-term one of this one, you're just coming back above the 200 day. I don't think it's a bad buy. Honestly, it's a bit expensive, but all of these cybersecurity companies are expensive. It's not making money. The forward PE is 69. It's losing about 269 million, which is nothing. This is a $21 billion market cap. So far year to date, you're up 25%. Over one year, you're down 15%. Your average target price is 175. So that 140, the 140 price that you, let's see, where'd the, uh, where'd the buy come in at? Um, 145, 94. Yeah, get it at 140. I think you hold on to the 130s, but I think you can get into there. If you don't have air, uh, cybersecurity uh, exposure, you should. I pick Palo Alto and CrowdStrike. Those are my two. Uh, Airbnb, secondary cross up. God, if you get in at one, that one, 107 and you're up here at 127, you're doing well. It's cover, it covered that gap. I mean, it was going to come up and cover that gap. It covered it. So I don't know that I necessarily get in there, but kudos to that one. Now, Dexcom, DXCM is the thing. This is the uh, the diabetes monitoring. Uh, they had a cross up here at 127. I would tell you, wait. I think you're coming back down here to under 120. I think anything under 120, you absolutely buy this one. Um, the danger of this one is that Apple comes out with some way to monitor your blood sugar on the, the Apple Watch. If that's the case, this one's dead in the water. And I think when this one got below 100, it kind of crashed on the last last news. Yeah, I think this was this was kind of where it came up that Apple was working on that. So if they figure out a way, boom, this one's dead. Okay, there's your uh, your scans. Remember TrendSpider, it's it, the 50% off sale is over. If you signed up and you need my algorithm, if you need anything, send me an email. Where can you go to find the email? Go to Linktree. Uh, linktree.com slash daily stock pick. This is what you'll see on your phone. This is what you'll see. That link up there, oh, I have to I have to edit that one, but the 50% off sale, it's now 25%. Uh, click on that one. You'll get that 25% uh, off. Second sponsor is Visible. If you're paying anything more than uh, $25 a month for your phone service, get Visible. I have it. You get $20 off your first month, so your first month is only 5 bucks. Uh, that's the service that I use. And if you don't have a brokerage, do not go to Robinhood. Go to Webull. Click on that third link. Webull is is a good, they have charting program on their uh, website that you can download for free. Uh, Robinhood doesn't. Robinhood is just not a good, very good brokerage. If you're trading crypto, I think Robinhood is fine. Uh, sign up for the newsletter, Daily Stock Picks newsletter. I wrote, is TrendSpider tax deductible? I asked Google's Bard. That's the kind of gem that you're going to get when you sign up. Uh, I do have a paid uh, version of the newsletter, and essentially uh, it's it's more educational rather than market-focused. But uh, this one, uh, the indicators that I use on the chart, you'll see them a lot. Uh, I, I posted there. And the other paid version that I have is... Uh, uh, my setup in TrendSpider. That's probably a detailed look. If you guys like this look of entries, exits, uh, the lines that I use, the Bollinger Bands, the RSI, the, the MACD, why I use all these. Uh, it, it goes over the, the exact what I use and how I use it. So uh, any other questions, hit me up. Go, when you go to the link tree, all of the social stuff is up here. Even that's the newsletter. But this email thing up here. You'll see all the icons up here. You can email me. You can cash at me. You can Venmo me. Sign up on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Um, oh, by the way, if you made it this far, hit five stars on Spotify or on Apple Podcasts. Just rate it. It helps the thing. So I'll send out the newsletter a little later. Thanks, you guys. Take care. I'll talk to you.